What's up guys, it's Black and bring you some more RA shoutcasting content. In the top right, we have Creo playing as Russia in his baby blue. In the bottom left, we have Unano playing as Ukraine in his kind of pinkish red. It's not really his normal color, unfortunately his normal color is no longer available since this is new release. That's okay. Uh, eventually we'll get those dark colors again and you know we'll be right back to his uh, burgundy maroon map is the endless night i believe by pink thought uh, i think this might have been a dt map uh, actually i think it plays really well as just a regular map i mean it's nothing super crazy you got double mine expo here double mine in the corner and these two little gem mines, or not gem mines just regular mines in the middle but i uh, kind of type in by gems surrounding them so they're gonna have a little slow regrowth unless you take them soon there is two oil derricks in this one, so you got this one and this one, so they're, you could probably contest these oil derricks if you're careful about it, but uh, it's going to be really easy to uh, just capture these. Looks like your nano's going to go for, he's going double ref, but he's very slow on the rest of them. It's infantry, and I wonder why. Uh, Creo, on this other hand, he's going mass rifles, just protecting the engineer. Uh, a little bit sketchy having your engineer come over on this side, but he should be fine. As, so as long as he parks his rifles right here, it'd be very hard for Unano to uh, get anything there unless he went dog first. And then in which case, if your engineer is anywhere away from your rifles, you're going to lose it versus a dog. But uh, that's not too common. Oh, it looks like we got some sneaky grins over here. Just three of them. So just going to poke in about a power plant, maybe. Looks like Creo did find one of uh, Unano's rifles got there. But he's going to capture this old there just fine. Uh, nothing too crazy going on over here. Looks like... Minano is going to harvest there, which is a little bit weird. You probably want to have both refineries on the bigger patch, but not going to make a difference in the grand scheme of things. I feel like I say grand scheme of things a lot. These grenadiers are going to uh, slowly go over there, and they're actually going to find a power plant, which is going to be nice if you can pick it up. War factories are about even, a little bit slower for Creo, but that's okay. Looks like we do have some spectators here. Unlucky Luke, Fazar, and Yara. And I'm just gonna go ahead and mute them so we will never see their chat again. Isn't that neat? It's actually a really great feature. Uh, something that was requested for a long time, but you know, just took a while on that uh, last release to finally get to this new one. And these grenadiers are gonna do some deep cover operation and just wait until minute eight or something like that, which is gonna be interesting. Uh, I guess it'd be really good if they did wait until that MCV moved out, but. You know, the chances of that being spotted are really high, especially, you know, if he just does something crazy, like just scouts his edge, just make sure there's no engineer hiding there. He's going to come down, and he's going to try to cap that oil deck, I imagine. He should be able to get it. Uh, this one rifle over here is not going to do anything. This one's too far away. So maybe if Nano goes with, like, the uh, black or something like that, he could get it over there. But it looks like he's just uh, building harvesters. So he's going to go on a very eco rich uh, build which is totally fine uh, there's not really anything to fight over you know you're not gonna lose this oil Derek losing this one not the biggest deal in the grand scheme of things there I go saying it again that time I knew I was gonna say it though and uh, oh, it looks like we got a little early pressure here by you know I was wondering where his army was uh, unfortunately not gonna get anything and it's actually gonna get cleaned up and now he's gonna go on with grenadiers which I mean he did see that he pulled this way but I'd be worried about a flame tower coming down it's actually gonna get a power plant here at the very least. I like how these grenadiers are all spread out, so this rifle is not going to be able to kill all three. That one's going to die, but these two are going to get away, so that's actually not a bad trade there. Uh, losing this army, not great, but it's whatever. It looks like Creo forgot about this, uh, this engineer and APC down there, so Nano might actually be able to run over and get it. Looks like he's just building an MCU first, so yeah, he's just setting Creo back by, you know, eight seconds for the power plant. Oh, uh, that actually is barely going to get away. God, the Grenadiers have such terrible accuracy. you think, you know, as thrown as far as they can, you know, throwing the same distance that a rifle can shoot, they'd have really good accuracy, but it looks like all that power just goes into the arm and not even into their actors, so... What's what's the, the saying? Uh, Kobe's for accuracy, Eats for power, something like that? Yeah, that's right, I'm a millennial. Yeah, I know, just uh, up to... Three barracks is going to be on that fourth one soon. He's just echoing it up right now. Good timing on the MCV. Got plenty of cash. We're just to start pumping out uh, heavy tanks. He, maybe he can go double ref if he wants to. I think that'd be really good on this map, actually. 
He's gonna go all the way over here, which I think it makes much more sense to go over here. And then if you really wanted to be like aggressive, you could try to just take this corner. But I think going here and then going to the middle is probably the, the better play. And uh, Creo looks like he's already ahead of him on his expansion a little bit, and that's just probably because he went over here. Very quick move out on his main MCV right here to take control of this, which is totally fine. It's gonna shut this whole area down. He's got his army protecting his main MCV, and he's got plenty of uh, defenses over there just to give him early scout. If you know was trying to push it, he could get that army over there. And now he's gonna come in over here with that uh, flak. He's gonna poke away. Those are just nice. Uh, his engineer is. Oh, dead, I guess? It was hanging out by his uh, oil earlier. Oh, it's over here. Never mind. So he's just going to counter take that. Uh, he actually needs to be careful that rifle is in a good position to snipe that. I'll have to pay attention to it later. And this APC is kind of waiting in the wings for that, but it's going to be one of those things where you have to remember. Looks like that rifle is not... Oh, no, it's definitely going to get it. Yep. Yep, good position there. You gotta be really careful with that. This flak's gonna probably sacrifice and let you know, know that hey, he's getting attacked there. And that was just a really lucky tank move. I'm not sure if he did it on purpose or not, but regardless, you now is gonna have a really great concave here. It's absolutely destroying that army. It's gonna make up for his army loss earlier. It gets the tank. Really doesn't lose that much at all. So that's pretty bad for a uh, pretty right there. As you can see, 56,000, 5,600 to 11,000. But, uh, actually, it looks like Unano managed to keep that, uh, flak, too. Uh, I, there, there's a lot of debate on whether the orders are not being read. Uh, some people think it is more buggy. I'm not so sure. Uh, it's entirely possible that it's just, uh, your units are moving in between cells. And as the amount of times you issue, it's not going to matter. Uh, if you over-issue in the new release, it's actually a bigger problem since the netcode is slightly improved, so... Uh, like your, your orders will be read more, but like the action won't be repeated. So the, there's some really weird stuff that can happen as a result of that. So is it a bug? I'm not so sure. It might be. Uh, we'll see. This is going to be a really good attack here. It's going to get two harvesters. Probably needs to retreat that army away now. He's just slowly little away. It looks like he's attacking over here too, but that is going to be cleaned up by V2. Unless he uh, really cares about the V2. I'm going to save that harvester, which is nice. He looks like he's retreating all that army over there, too. Looks like Creel was trying to capture that, but it looks like he sold the refinery. Uh, probably would have been okay with just that army, but that's alright. That army got deflected, and that test coil is going to shut down that tank. But Creel is quicker on the transfer to Tier 2. And that Yak's going to go down. Got a decent amount of infantry. Uh, it is nice that Kreo has these three oil lyrics, and that's going to help him in the eco, even though I think he's probably ahead in the eco department anyways. Just slightly ahead of him. That's probably just the difference in ecos, but that V2 could be really good right now. Uh, misfires there. Unaro could actually probably go in and deal with that, but he's probably a little scared of the V2. See something else. Oh, it's just the rock over here shooting the yak. Yeah, that little attachment's going to get cleaned up. Unana's gonna go face first into that flint tower, but uh, he takes care of this. He could totally win that army. Uh, one heavy tank and one V2 is not gonna beat the size of army Unana has there, but he's just gonna retreat and that's fine. Looks like he's got most of his army just rallying over here. He's got uh, his refinery salvage here. He needs to take this middle one and then they'll probably be about even on uh, refinery total. Unana's floating a lot of cash. This is a really deep flank and uh, it's not gonna be on his radar for quite a while. I think attacking here would actually be really good because that is where radar is, but he's probably going to go all the way up here. And uh, this is still a great target too. Oh, I missed those yaks. Get a good sweep there. It's like, I'm pretty sure you, you know I built another yak. That black is barely going to miss those tanks. Looks like he's got a nice tank here. So he's kind of all over the place and Rio's going to have to really struggle with this. Although Rio is a more passive player, so he's going to be able to defend a little bit better, I'd say gonna lose these two harvesters. Oh, maybe that one might get away. That yak is gonna go down, and that army is probably gonna just die. He's gonna find out some vital information that the radar is there. And Yunano is going double ref finally, or factory finally. He's got quite the money to do it. He's floating 9k. Doesn't have a whole lot to deal with this though. Uh, he needs his infantry production. It's, looks like it's stalled out. And that's why he's not a. Uh, that's why he's floating so much. 
That's going to be a juicy target for that V2 if he wants to gauge back into it. Nice. You can see there's a flank going on up here. Yeah, Yunana's going to get that cleaned up. Did get the War Factor over here. It's going to trade both the Yaks out. Oh, Braley does not trade those one just because you know target fired that at the same time. But, uh... Yeah, looks like another Harvester went down over there. Yano's gonna lose the main base because he's got nothing. Just now realized that his infantry key was stopped. And uh, luckily he does have a second war factory, so he's gonna be able to build APCs at the minimum once all this goes down, but... Looks like he might be able to defend, mo save something. That war factory's gonna go down, probably the SD too, but at least he'll save his barracks and some power plants. That is a lot of flax, wow. I'm not sure if that was to deal with the air or if he's just trying to do something with a mass flak transition. But, uh, you know, there's a heavy tank here, and if it stays alive, it's like it's gonna go down and all this is gonna get cleaned up, so. Did manage to save a lot of that and kept a lot of flax alive, too. Uh, needs to save that tank. This has got a little attachment over here, too. Another tank tried to go in, but it's like it was low health and died. Wow, 10k, 11k for a nano, so he's really floating, really needs to get that, uh, those vehicle production rolling. He's sticking with Flax, which, I mean, I guess does deal with Soviet Tier 2 and Ally Tier 2 really well, but Flax don't do anything to the heavy tanks. I think this is people trying to do something a little different, maybe? I know Orbs experimented with this when he's played RR the few times that he has, of just max Flax and how good they can be. Uh, I mean, yeah, cool, great, you know, they're, they're fast, they're gonna kill infantry at decently, but... As you can see, they're pretty fragile. He's already lost two flax for pretty much nothing. It's gonna lose a third one, fourth one, and a fifth one. So I don't think he's trading efficiently there. And uh, you know, heavy tanks would just probably serve better for the tier one by five meta. I mean, maybe with like IC, this would be really good. And Creo does love his tech play, so I guess flax would be decent there. But yeah, as you can see, they take forever to kill infantry, even in a pretty big pack, and. That Yak, unfortunately, not going to have a good attack run, but they're not going to be able to do anything with that test coil. Harvester's going to get away if he really wants to. Test coil finally goes down, the Harvester's going to get away, and... Yeah, all he's losing here is a refinery and a barracks. Almost loses his uh, flak just from the bad pathing. So once Creo kind of re-establishes and stuff, I think he's going to be okay. Minama has such a big float, though, and he's finally switching back to heavy tanks. Uh, that was an interesting paratroop route, but it's okay. It looks like Yunana's still on tier 1.5, so... But all of his flocks are pretty much dead, and that this is actually kind of when he needs them. It's, that Yak's gonna go down, fortunately. He's gonna lose all this infantry. He's gonna lose his class 2 flocks, too. But, uh, yeah, Yunana's camping all the ore, which is nice. Yeah, this is a really fortified spot, but the heavy tank managed to find a spot, and it gets burst down by all the flames. So this harvester's got pulled off because he knows about that there. This rocket trooper doing some really expensive scouting. Yeah, these three old decks actually might make a big difference over here. Looks like this paratrooper got at least one harv. I don't think Yunan is aware of it, but he's just gonna retreat it away. This is gonna be a good spot for him anyways. That's gonna get cleaned up so those harvesters are safe. There's quite a big army here. It looks like crew does not have a lot of army at all. He's got only 2,000 less than Yana, and I think it's just he has a lot of air. These yaks are gonna have really good attack runs. It's gonna lose, oh, just the one actually, but yeah, he did clean up a lot of that army. You know, I know he's gonna lose that, uh, Heavy tank, unless it barely might get away. One more. Nope. Dead. Yeah, so the army value is actually really close. Right here. Oh, rocket soldier just randomly killing an Oderic. Interesting. That heavy tank's gonna get chased off. Yeah, these rocket soldiers are gonna do really good if they were just a step closer. They might be a little bit close out of range, but they are gonna get that harvester right there. Yeah, Yunana's probably not going to be aware of that for a while, so they might actually get a second or third harvester. See, this rock soldier still chipping away at the top of there. Oh, flame tower is going to go down. Misses the two rockets, though, but it's probably going to get them both on the second try, yeah. 
Little flank there by Kuru got shut down by the Flax. And you know, it's gonna kill this oil derrick, so he's finally gonna be back to even on the oil derricks. B2. Decent, decent shot. There's a lot of heavy tanks here, so there's a lot of flax there too. Yeah. You know, is it gonna be caught in a move order, maybe? Oh, he goes in for an attack. I would really like to see him just micro out all the rockets there. Uh, maybe that's beyond his micro skill. I think someone, someone like Mint would definitely just been able to shoot all the rockets there. But Kurt's gonna be able to clean that up. Gonna lose one tank, but that's about it. He's gonna just let those tanks go. Uh, okay, yeah, never mind. No, never mind. Never mind, my never mind. He's just gonna put a little away with the axe. One rock soldier is not enough to deal with two heavy tanks, so you need at least like four. Two heavy tanks have more range than rockets, so unless you actually see the tanks, you're not gonna be able to kill them. Yano, I like this. He's gonna go back and after actually capture that oil lyric, so he's gonna be two to zero, which is gonna be nice. Quite a big uh, rocket density right there. They're just taking a really weird path. Got to be careful with that. Yeah, that one rocket might get that tank, but they're going to be much faster, especially after it's prone, and just get away. Those might be coming into play later for Little Flank. I'd like to see him just retreat that. Losing two flax just to kind of scout. And uh, Kree's going to be able to respond to that. He's got three X there, so he's actually going to deal with this pretty well. Especially if this flat goes in and gets itself roasted first. That V2 misses. Those Yaks got a lot of rockets. And now Yano is kind of stuck here. He's going to engage in this, which is good because these tanks were a little far ahead. But there's two V2s, and that's going to be scary if you can micro them really well. That's going to be a good V2 shot. And that flame power is just in range, just enough to disrupt this. So Yano is going to lose this whole army here. So trade it out pretty well, though. And actually, that. Heavy tank, uh, if a V2 hadn't killed it, he actually might have won that battle, but... This Yak's actually probably gonna get 1v2 unless he doesn't move it. Aw, yeah, if he kept that moving, he would be able to win that. You know, I'm finally gonna ship away at this, uh, flame tower wall over here. And that Yak's going to kill that V2. Won't have enough to kill that one, unfortunately, but... Just out of, uh, ammo. Needs to go and repair that. These two heavy tanks... Looks like they just got caught on a bad W select, but they're actually gonna get through and manage to just do a reunite with their army. Kuro getting pushed back over here. And this harvester might go down to this little flank here. This is kinda kinda a scrappy game right now. Looks like all the center of attention right here. These two heavy tanks decide to back out, go in front of their harvester here, but well if that yak focuses on that one it might kill that tank. Harvester is gonna get away again. Yep. Not enough to kill that, but the test coil should be more than enough for these accessory units right here. Taking a look at the ecograph, and uh, we're pretty much even. Like $200 difference. Assets are a little bit more in Kuro's favor, but uh, Yuniano has better income right now. I think that's just because Kuro was recently getting his harvesters harassed and had to move him around. Another good pair drop over here. Came from a correct angle this time. Probably going to get at least one harvester. Oh, nope. You know, very on top of it. That's good to see. This uh, harvester is uh, deciding to come all the way down here, which is not great. I actually might die because of that. Oh, he's going to go on a crushing spree. Oh, just misses the crushes. And unfortunately, he only has a rock over there. Creo going to try to do a little flank. Looks like Yanana was the first to go tier 3, which is surprisingly. Uh, Creo, definitely that tech player. Definitely was first to go tier 2, but sat on tier 2 for a while. And Unano is getting that IC out, which is great. He's also transitioning to Mammoth Tanks, and he's got Triple War Factory, so that's going to be really good. Uh, Mammoth Tanks are, they're like a really weird unit. They're they are just kind of decent at everything. You know, they got AA, they got more armor than a single heavy tank does. And I think they do the same amount of damage as a heavy tank, so... They're, uh, you know, in a single space, they're better than a heavy tank, but you know, two heavy tanks is more efficient at armor and damage than a mammoth tank. It's just two heavy tanks don't have the infantry punch or the AA capability, so going a lot of mammoth tanks can be really good, but it also can be really hard against the Soviet player when they can just outproduce you with uh, mammoth tanks. That being said, if Creel is just on tier two with V2s and stuff, mammoth tanks would probably be really good. Yunan's gonna find a nice little angle here. Creel doesn't have a whole lot. He does have two yaks, but Yunan's been doing a really good job of keeping some flax with his army. Uh, and he's gonna find this without a heavy tank support, but those yaks, oh, such a great angle there. Yunano's still got a better concave there, but, oh, 
the B2 and the Yak crashes are doing really good. Ooh, four harvesters going down for Kira. That's actually probably going to really hurt him and his eco. He's already been struggling. These harvesters haven't been working. And Eno is camping every eco spot, but this one's a single mine, so... Those harvesters are going to finally be able to go back to work since that heavy tank died. Yeah, this harvester actually might die to a single mammoth tank over there, which is not going to be great. Uh, this mammoth tank is going to find a bunch of infantry, and it's going to be able to yeah, turn around and kite. They are slower than infantry, but... As you can see, they do such a phenomenal job of just running away with those, uh, their tusk rockets. Ooh, looks like Creo returned the favor and killed two harvesters over there. Looks like he probably should be aware of the IC. No, he did not see the IC. That's unfortunate. Uh, might catch the harvester right there. But, yeah, I think three heavy tanks will actually beat two mammoth tanks. It's going to be interesting to see. You can see how quickly these uh, heavy tanks are dealing with that and... Really good micro here just to kind of pull the wounded tank back. No side willing to trade a tank out there, which is great. Uh, definitely should just take those back to the SD and repair them though. Uh, Creo just needs to establish some eco a little bit. Uh, needs another harvester down here. Maybe just, he's got one extra one, he could just move down there. But uh, Yunano has been really good on his uh, harvesting flanks right here. You know, the four over here. Looks like this army might be able to get this one right here too. Big battle here in the middle. Uh, Yunano. I think has a better one just because he does have mammoths. But there is two V2s there. They're gonna have a decent shot. Just barely miss. Oh, pair bombs, but it looks like it, Nano's gonna miss there. Kuro was just aware, and that's just because the angle. Those two Husk are unfortunately gonna be the only casualties of that. A heavy tank pushing those harvesters off again. Kuro's gonna have to respond to that. He's really good not to overcommit there. I like that. Although he only sent one rocket a V2, which is not gonna be enough to deal with that, I think. This harvester probably gonna get caught and killed. Yeah, that's definitely gonna go down. It's stuck on the one more rocket. Barely got it. And Yunana's gonna come over here. This is relatively weakly defended. Three hit mammoth tanks and all that army are gonna be able to deal with it. But uh these V2s are within striking distance there. Looks like Yunana did manage to kill another harvester over there. Don't think he's gonna be able to deal with all that. Maybe look it away, but this is really a concern right here. All these harvesters are going to get pulled away again. He needs, he needs those B2s down there, but bad move order. Going to lose your refinery there. No, not too big. Just needs to build another refinery to replace that. See another flank over here going on. So you're now very flanky on this game. Uh, Creo kind of forced to be on the back foot. And Iron Curtain used on the mammoth tank. That's, I mean, that's an okay usage. It's going to prevent at least a little bit of these, but uh, Yunano is focused somewhere else right now. Kind of just taking it to Korea on every step of the game, which Yunano is a pretty good player. It's, it's kind of expected him to outpace Korea a little bit, but Korea's put in a really good fight. It was looking really good for him for a while. Uh, this attack's actually going to catch the tech center and reset Yunano a little bit. He's also going to get a war factory, and I think that might be Yunano's only airstrip too, so this is going to be really good. It's going to force Yunano to back check there, but a career doesn't really have anything to do with that, and that's a lot of where his eco is. Bringing in the paratroopers just to help defend right there, but unfortunately Korea's tanks are out of position, and that's going to be a field day for mammoths. All the infantry is gone, but three mammoths versus that. Uh, I don't think they're actually going to win that. They might win just by the canning if they target fire out of the tanks first, and Korea's focused on that one. He should just attack move into that, I think. One tank down. Yeah, that heavy tank's not going to cut it. Uh, it's going to be close, though. Oh, gets another harvester. It's going to be really close. Heavy tank first mammoth tank. It's going to be so close. One more burst from the mammoth. Oh, the mammoth tank's probably one. So I guess that kind of proves that three heavy tanks don't beat two mammoths if they're kiting. But uh, those mammoths were also vetted, so that, that could make a difference there. You know, that 10%. Armor bonus does impact stuff like that. You know, I was going to be able to clean this up. Looks like he killed the MCV there, which is... Oh, never mind. The MCV is just now coming back. Yeah, Creo, for once, kind of got stuck on Tier 2, and I think that's kind of been the difference maker. Uh, IC wasn't that impactful yet. These mammoths have definitely been doing a lot of work, and Creo hasn't had the multiple war factories to really pump out heavy tanks he needs to deal with these mammoth tanks. Another IC there. It's going to get all the infantry, and it's going to push that army back. Yeah, some MiGs would be really good for Kuro, uh, but if he doesn't like longbows, he probably doesn't like MiGs either. 
And uh, MIGs are definitely so fragile that you have to be really careful with the use of them. And then once again, you know, it has been really good with these flax, so MIGs would be even that much harder to use. I really like this. He's pushing with an MCV here just to take this ore. And he's really splitting Creo. Uh, he has to choose whether he wants to defend with his army or defend there. And Creo's going to go ahead and call the GG. It's going to look like he's going down here. So, uh, really well played by Yunana there. He looked pretty strong throughout. Uh, I, I would love to see if there was a bet. I don't think it actually happened. Um, yeah, Korea looked really good too. For once, he got stuck on tier 2, and that, you know, did make things a little bit harder for him. Uh, these mammoths were really good for Yunano, and like I said, it, had Korea had uh, multiple war factories, you could have dealt with them a little bit better, but as you can see, if, you know, you're just placing uh, mammoths straight up with uh, heavy tanks, and your opponent's not producing more heavy tanks in that spot, then they'll excel really well. AIC also wasn't a huge factor for once. Uh, did help a little bit on this right here, and this last little flank right here, but... It's, it's hard to use IC on Mammoth Tanks. Uh, they're typically better with like Flax or APCs or, you know, Tesla Tech, obviously. But it's just Mammoth Tanks are so slow that they're really, if you use uh, IC on it, you can just kind of retreat like Kira did. At the same time, uh, you know, free and vulnerable armor is better than taking damage at any point in time. So, well played by you now, and I'll see you all next time.